Hey guys, Spectre here, and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a 3D Chrome spin effect using Blender, and as well as showing you how to vectorize your image before getting started. The first thing you're going to do is open up Photoshop, and you're going to open your image that you want to use. For my instance, I'll be using a flying ghost. Let's say the ghost is white. And so then you go over to Image, Adjustments, and you go over to Invert, and it's going to turn the image black. So then what you're going to do is hit Control, Alt, Shift, and the letter W, and you're going to get this pop-up, and mark it as PNG, and make sure that Transparency is enabled. Then hit Export, and then name whatever you want your image to be. then hit save and then open Adobe Illustrator and then hit open file new open and then go over to your ghost and with alt and the mouse wheel so scroll back and adjust this make sure that when you're you're adjusting your image you also hit shift that way it doesn't warp okay now so you go over to image trace and then you hit silhouettes and then hit okay then hit expand and then zoom in now your image is vectorized and it's ready for export for blender go to file export export as and make sure that SVG is enabled then hit export then just hit OK now close this out as well as Photoshop and go over to blender okay the first thing you're gonna do once you open blender is remove everything hit delete oh and I'll have um, whatever I'm pressing here on the side so go to file import and then scalable vector graphics and then go over wherever you saved your SVG file and then zoom in and then select everything that do control and the letter J sometimes it doesn't work for some reason I don't know if that happens to you guys but what you can do is just also select these two up here and hit control J and if that doesn't work, usually the third time does work. Select everything on the canvas and Control and J. Then it joins both together. Now select this and then go to rotation and do 90. Then go over to your object data properties. And then go down to where it says geometry and then extrude your image. Just mess around with it, see how much you want to do it with. For me, I'm going to do 0 0.005. Okay, once you're done with your extrude, um, you can scale it up. Then right click, convert to mesh, then go over to your modifiers tab, add a modifier, and do remesh. And go over to where it says smooth and then bring this up to 10 and make sure to uncheck remove disconnected and then hit apply then go over to where it says object and then go to sculpt mode and then hit over on smooth and start getting closer to your image and then make sure to set the strength down and the radius a little up and start smoothing out the edges and if you notice it's not really doing anything you can maybe increase the strength okay and when you're done go over back to your object mode and then right click and shade smooth and now your image should look much more smooth and not so rough so click on your image and then go over to 
material properties you can remove this add a new material and then go down to where it says metallic increases up and then the roughness bring it down and then make sure that this one's selected the viewport shading then go over to shading and then select world and then do shift a and search for environmental textures then select these two together and then hit open so go over to where it says local disk or anywhere you have blender installed and then go to program files then go to blender foundation blender 3.4 or where whichever version you're using then go to 3.4 data files and studio lights then world and then choose the exr that you want to use and then make sure that this one's worse is rendered make sure it's enabled and then go back to your layout and then do the same here you'll notice now that your image is chrome and you can also change your base color so go back over to your material properties while selected onto the image base color and then make this up and the same here and you can also change it to a different color that you want so if you want like a greenish chrome yellow whatever and also you can mess around with the roughness And the more roughness you have, the less uh, reflective it'll be. So I recommend uh, to do the sweet spot. So if you don't want the background image to show, what you can do is go over to your render properties and then go to film and then hit transparent. And that removes um, the background. And then now to animate your effect, bring up your timeline and then go over to your object properties. Then bring up your camera, do shift and the letter A and then hit camera. And go over to where it says output properties and change the resolution. So this would be uh, for, for an Instagram reel. So 1080 and then 1920. and make sure to bring back your camera. You can go over to your output properties and then start going backwards. And another thing you can do is click on your image and then right click and then set origin to center of mass. So now you can do it's zero on everything. Or you can just bring this up slightly where it's floating and then right click on your camera and then set active camera and you can see what's happening so it is kind of small so I will scale up my image so select your image and then hit S and then make it big and then you can adjust your camera by clicking on the edges and align and also another thing select your camera and then go over to your object data properties for the camera and then you can switch your focal length you can zoom in and out but I'll leave mine at 50 and then just adjust okay so now it is time for animating so click on your image and then on the keyframe here um, insert a keyframe on the rotation Z axis and then all the way to your last frame will be 250 and you can turn it up to 360 and then make sure that you insert the keyframe so now if you, if you press the spacebar it would do a rotation of 360 degrees and then one more thing on the keyframe right click and then go to interpolation mode and then linear 
and that way it rotates smoothly. And if you want extra smoothness, go over to your output properties and then set the frame rate over to 60. And if you press the spacebar, it spins even smoother. There are other animations that I've um, posted, so I'll leave the eye icon on the top and you can click on the other effect that I've created. It's a swing effect. Go give it a, a check. And now when you're ready to render, go over to your output and then select your folder that you want your render to be at. I'll do mine on the home screen. And if you want to add a background to your image, you can, and you can render this out as a PNG. And you can maybe also just add an image in the background when you're using Adobe Premiere or After Effects or whatever video editor you use. And that way it doesn't lose its quality and just um, compile your images. But for this instance, I'm going to just make it into an MP4 file right off the bat. So go over to File Format and then do the FMPEG video and then go to Encoding. Go over to output quality and then bring this up to high quality or lossless if you want to. And where it says container, add this to MPEG4. And what you can do is hit control and the letter F12 and it will start rendering for you. And you can see here on the screen, it is rendering. And depending on your computer, it shouldn't take so long. And there you have it, guys. That is how to create a 3D Chrome spin effect using Blender. And if this has helped you out in any way or form, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also, follow me on my social medias on Instagram and TikTok. It is spectre.3D. I did switch my name over from Spectre uh, GFX because I am falling in love more with um, 3D and just 3D art in general with Blender. Um, so yeah, um, also check out my other videos. I do have another video on how to do a 3D swing effect similar to this tutorial. Um, I'll leave it over on the top icon and also it'll be on the description. Thanks for watching.